the Slow Readers Club. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good afternoon, mate. Um, now, the interview was actually meant to be live and in person uh, because you you guys were set to be our gig of the week next week when you played the Thecla in Bristol. For obvious reasons, that isn't now going to uh, to happen. It's crazy times at the moment. How, uh, how are you guys getting through uh, getting through it at the moment? Yeah, I mean, it's mad. I mean, we saw, saw it coming on the horizon, I suppose. We actually had um, our label's Chinese-owned Modern Sky Records. So we had our... Uh, we had, the sort of heads of the label in the UK, Dave, come and see us in the studio earlier in the year, and it was just kicking off in China at that that time. And then obviously, sort of see it coming over Europe and everything else, and just think, I suppose it was just a matter of time as to when it was going to impact on the UK. Really, and we sort of were praying that it didn't land when it did. Oh, but so it, yeah, the, the timing it. was almost to the day of the new album release. You guys, I, you guys must have been like, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> it's pretty mad. But I mean, you know, it's it, I, our album release is a small concern in the grand scheme of things, I suppose. So it, it, the main thing is that everybody's healthy. Um, if you look at the positives, people have got more time to spend with the record. And certainly when the news of the postponement went out, the fans, we didn't have to sort of, we didn't put a begging message out there or anything. People just knew the situation um, and started, you know, spreading the word about the album. I mean, obviously they, they love it as well. I think the people really see the, the response has been really positive and it, it's got us all very excited for whenever it happens that we get out there and do it live again. Everybody's going to know the words. Everybody's going to be like absolutely buzzing to get out, to get out again, as long as we feel as though it's safe. Um, yeah. So it should, top, it should be top when it happens. So talk, talking of which, obviously it wasn't just the album launched it. Um, it is that to be put back. You were scheduled from yesterday to be out on a nationwide tour all around Europe as well, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's the likelihood of that being rescheduled um, for later in the year? It's a case of if you can do, you will do, or yeah, you're I'm just going to play it by ear? That's certainly what we're going to we're, we're aiming to do. Be, um, hoping for September, October time. Um, fingers crossed. Uh, but we'd. we'd I, you know, agents and promoters and all that are working all that out now because I imagine there'll be a lot of competition for venues and things because everybody's had to reschedule, so it'll be a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, but, uh, everything I've seen from other bands rescheduled at the moment, everything seems to be going for a sort of October um, time, so it's going to be a, a crazy, crazy busy period. <laughs> yeah, it will be mad. Might Although that said, as, as, as you were saying, um, I don't think there's not going to be an excuse for people to turn up and not be singing along to the songs at least. This no, time exactly. and I've had uh, had the half a year with the record. If there's one positive, it's that, that people have had time to 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 live with it. I mean, it would have been we'd have been out and doing it more or less directly after the album was out um, had it, had it gone to gone to plan. So that's a, yeah, that's good that people will have had time to live with it for a bit. And in other words. So talking directly of the new album, um, The Joy of the Return, is album number four. Um, what are the main differences between this one and album number three, Build a Tower, the last one? Is um, it a continuation? Is it a new direction? What, what uh, have you to tried degree, to do? To a degree, it's a continuation in the respect that we um, we try and vary what we're doing in terms of the, each track to track throughout the record. Um, if something's working in practice you know whether it be a heavy tune or a tune with this like a pop funky sort of tune we'll we'll we'll, we'll sort of follow the the path of the, of the tune really as long as we're all still playing it all into it then the tune will get finished um and that's i think there was maybe we had maybe 14 tracks for the album um and then ended up with 11 partly due to sort of re- the restrictions on time that we had in terms of the budget for the recording and things but um yeah, I mean, the, in terms of the process, uh, it was our first album as a full-time band, so we're in during the day, fresher minds, more time to spend on arrangements and individual parts. Um, so musician, in terms of musicianship, everybody's come along, I think. Um, lyrically, I had normally, historically, I'd be in the studio and still scrub, still finishing my lyrics. Well, right. Well, it have been, you know, because there's only so many hours in the day when you do a day job. And yeah. Um, and I kind of, I think I kind of like the excitement of that as well. But um, this time round, I had most of them bar two, maybe where I was still writing them in the studio. But yeah, it's been it's been really good. Um, and having so, that having that extra time and having that extra um, sort of budget to go along with it, the album does have a, a we've said before has a has a bigger <laughs> sound. Uh, tracks like All I Hear and Jericho, um, they sound like arena tracks. <laughs> I think 
you mentioned before that, that that was specifically you weren't writing because you're going to be playing bigger venues. That's just a natural progression as well, is it? Yeah, I think we've. I mean, we've probably always written big, bigger than you know. We, we, even when we were playing smaller venues back in the day, like we've always written bigger sounding songs than than the venue perhaps um, dictates. But it's just the first time that we've had we've stepped it up in terms of the studio. We had we had a bit more cash from uh, the last album doing quite well, um, so we just inve- reinvested that into the band, and then it's yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a closer realization to what you intended in the first place, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, we certainly had a good experience recording for the most part. The actual getting in there and, and writing and, and jamming together and performing together, it's amazing. And it's like, and we just do more of that and we're doing it on bigger stages. You know, we went last year, we yeah. went out to a mad cool festival in Madrid and Rock Workshire in Belgium. Right. And so it's been really good. I've always written about the sort of world around me, what I'm, what, what I'm experiencing. And, you know, I'm not a teenager anymore. Um, and I'm sort of with the things that concern me are what you know are people's sort of mental uh, well-being and seeing now society's de- disintegrating on social media, seeing people tear out tear holes in each other during the Brexit campaign and families getting divided and all that kind of stuff was it's just a bit uh, sad really and and a, it's a, a lot of it's a comment on that it's more about how it affects us all personally and mentally and psychologically than me campaigning for a particular party or anything like that. There's a, there's a track on there called No Surprise, um, which was written after seeing Great Hack, The Great Hack on Netflix, which talks about um, how Cambridge, Cambridge Analytica, their role in um, the Brexit campaign and Trump's campaign and hyper-targeted messaging and that prepare, appearing as as news when it isn't actual news and it's actually campaign messaging. All that stuff, scary. <laughs> particular has been incredibly huge for us because like the it the um this the way that with the whole thing set up this sort of people when people can see that the friends they're into, into it and it's presented to them in that way i think it's and we've got like a, as well as our main page we've got a facebook group that uh fans have set up that they all talk to one another in and and you know a, a really it's passionate community around the band doesn't it yeah yeah it's right. amazing so like the, as much as there's a lot of negatives to it um my our little corner of it is pretty good there's a lot of a lot okay. of <laughs> and something i was keen to ask you about is the uh it is because it stands out a mile in terms of on a record um in a, in a record store shelf and even, even when you're scrolling online through sort of new music is the artwork for the album now i believe that was actually uh it, it was your design as well that's right yeah that was my day job um before we went full time at the end of 2018, um, and I've just kept doing it. We we're too tight to pay anybody else, uh, and I'm a bit <laughs> of a started off, um, I started kicking around ideas for it when we were out in Germany, and uh, we we're in the airport, and I'd had the, the title for the album in my head for a bit, and I wanted to find something that was like um, an infinite shape to sort of a, as an expression of the joy of the return, um, that sort of folded in on itself. And I just was looking on Instagram and Pinterest and stuff for bits of inspiration, and I came upon this artist's work a lady called Ruth Pestle who does these sort of paper sculptures so I got in touch with her and um yeah managed to she she agreed that she'd be up for being involved so she sent me these sculptures in the post and then one of them's the album cover and one of them's we've done we've used the other sculptures for sing, the single covers um yeah got a guy called Tim Ainsworth who I knew from my old job to do photographing for me and then I stuck them in in design and Photoshop, stuck a colour background on, put some type on it, and it looks pretty cool. But um, and then we had we had I worked with another cool thing we had was um, I had all sorts of fun fun ideas with it with like whether we could do a three D printed sculpture of it as a merch okay. item or whether we could do like a three D projection on the side of buildings. And we ended up um, scaling those ideas down a bit. But the Chris, <laughs> our video guy, has had somebody on his floor who. Um, does 3D printing and can 3D mapping. So in the video, for all I hear, we've got like an animation of the shape, which he had somebody help out with, which was pretty cool. Yeah. And then had the night and day happened, we were going to have that projected in the window. Um, but yeah, all that, I love all that, that side of stuff. And I think, you know, one day when we're doing sort of 
bigger shows and all that. We'd like like to do more of that um, you know, on the on the visual side and the on the video side uh, from bring that more into the live you show. You guys are obviously you, you had earmarked the next couple of months to be out on the road on on tour. That's obviously on an in, indefinite hold now. Um, what? How have the plans for the next couple of months reshaped, or have they reshaped yet? Yeah, we're sort of taking it day, day by day, really, at the moment. I've got, um, obviously, this week is mainly focused on p- plugging the album in any way we can from within our own houses. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, things like this help, you know, you, the guys like yourself have helped and get the word out there. Um, it, after the, after this week's gone, it's going to be a case of seeing how we write. The writing process will be the f- fundamental thing, because um, yeah. it's going to be all in our houses for like three months or something, two, three months, I, I would imagine. Um, so I guess we'll try and get on Skype or something like that and have a jam over Skype. Or, um, yeah, that'll be cool. I, so you've already, uh, you pulled a, uh, you did a Facebook live session and Q&A when you could all get together still last week. So maybe yeah. some more of those in the offing if yeah. they relax the rules a little bit. If we can physically get together, yeah. that'd be brilliant and and, and you know we're, we're gonna have to find ways of um making money in this period as well so we're looking at maybe setting up a fan club or um doing those live shows but doing them with bigger production values but then having them behind some kind of paywall where people pay for a virtual ticket or can donate to us or something like that just to keep yeah. us doing it really rather than keep the money coming in and ticking over <laughs> I the um driver <laughs> that said as well um aaron so obviously merch is going to be critical to you guys um over the next couple of months is is you with the postponements of the tour and everything available where can people get their hands on that um our website is the slow readers and um, we should have the tour merchandise from this tour out on there next week um so yeah there'll be a lot a lot of cool new stuff for people to to go and buy and help us out but yeah Thanks for the plug on that one. Could right. become could be uh, could become collectors' items. The tour yeah. that didn't happen because of the coronavirus outbreak. Yeah. These could be classic shirts that go down in the years. Listen, yeah. thank you very much for talking to us. We're going to wrap up with a couple of random ones, uh, as as we always do. So they're all kind of based around um, the situation and the news at the moment. Um, so if you could um, binge watch any box set at the moment, what would you go for? What's your binge of choice? Uh. We've just started rewatching Line of Duty, actually. Oh, yeah, it's a yeah. classic. Yeah. And the big, the, big, the big ones as well, like Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Although slow, Better Call Saul is a bit of a, more of a slow burner in it. I said to my wife the other day, actually, that this that this situation we're in is similarly paced to Better Call Saul. It's like it's like watching uh, Contagion or something like that, like a, a virus disaster movie, but yeah, drawn out. <laughs> like, <laughs> Um, if you could isolate anywhere, where would you go for? I mean, normally I'd say New York or something like that, but because it's cool. But um, if you're stuck inside, you might as well go for somewhere like a with a decent view, aren't you? Like uh, Barbados or somewhere yeah. nice. So somewhere warm and sunny, Talent. looking out at some blue sea and things. Yeah, I'm with you on that one definitely. Like it's Listen. Warm. Best of um, best of health to yourself, your family. Stay fit, stay well, stay safe. Rest of the band as well. Thank you so much for talking to us. Yes, and we'll be dropping the uh, dropping the album review of what is a cracker of an album uh, in the next day or so. Thanks very much. No worries. Cheers, Aaron. Take care. Bye bye.